Uh, what we did in the paper, you know, and there's some adjustments along the way, was to review the linkages between the ideas of, on development that were just presented, and I'm not going to go through that, because, I mean, that was a very exciting two presentations that we had. But what we did, try to do, was to review the linkages between the ideas on development and the institution or the multilateral system, the, w the GATT initially and the WTO later on. Hence, the question that we are posing today is uh, whether, and I want to share and debate with you, whether the institution, the GATT, the multilaterals, and then the WTO, uh, whether the system is an absorber or a diffuser of these ideas. Um, and that, that is um, the question that I, I, I sort of we started with. I think that after hearing both David's and, and, and John's presentation, my bias is that the system has been and, and this we're going to debate later on, that the system is an absorber of, of the ideas. Or at least initially, it's an absorber of, an idea, of ideas, and then it's a diffuser of ideas. So there's a first, ethyl diffusion. <laughs> uh, so first it's an absorber of ideas, and then it becomes an absorber of, uh, of ideas. And so the institution, and, and this is, m might be applicable to other institutions, but it definitely I see it as applicable to the multilateral system, is that the system goes through a series of moments, of stop-go moments. I mean, we have a first cycle of, uh, of absorbing and then diffusing, and then another idea that is an abs uh, absorber and then diffuse. I mean, but that, that's up for debate, but this is what I, I think that I would say today after having heard the presentations uh, preceding. Uh, this is, I mean, what, um, what um, I, I think are the moments in development. So I should start, I mean, sort of echoing something of the things that were said before. I mean, that some of the ideas on development were reflected in the creation of the gap initially. I mean, in the climate of opinion, and this is, I think, that it's almost a, a, a legacy of, of the whole sort of system, is that there was a climate of opinion where development, in which theorem is a problem. It's a problem that has a it has a solution, it requires a solution, and that, can, that solution can be, could be articulated in technical terms. I mean, everything, and whether, whether it was the big push or it was a backward-forward linkages or it was balanced versus unbalanced growth, all required state intervention. I mean, that was sort of the, 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 the minimum common, this, this, what, this is what all the theories shared at that time in the 1940s and 50s and even into the 60s is that all, requiring, all required state intervention. So what the system reflected at that point and absorbed is that the state required room to maneuver. The state required room to act. <coughs> and when the Prevish Singer thesis gained ground, and I should say that Prevish is a graduate of this institution and is also, also taught in this institution, so going back to the periphery, I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Prevish, Prevish, I think, graduated in 1920s. In the, yeah, I mean, th there's two panels actually on Prevish in this, in this conference, and I think that he graduated in the, uh, yeah, definitely, he graduated, well, maybe 1921 or 22, and then he was a professor at the institution, etc. But I mean, at that time, I mean, at the time in, in the 1950s, going back to the ideas, I mean, uh, uh, in the 1950s, I mean, the state was central to the idea of development, and uh, uh, so, but, but also then when the Prevish Singer ideas came and began to gain ground, I mean, the, the, the trade became a focus of conflict. Trade, the trade regime became uh, sort of, all eyes were on the trade regime, and uh, that needed also technical <coughs> tinkering. I mean, the technical, the, the, sorry, the trade system needed uh, te technical tinkering in order to allow for development. And this is where I think the GATT started into a series of reforms. So the first technical fixes were allowing for state intervention. Give them room, give us room, we'll, either it's uh, import substitution or backward linkages. And this came in hand in hand with a development assistance, with a surge in development assistance. What we could <laughs> call the, sort of the golden age of, of, maybe the golden age of capitalism, but also the golden age of the of development assistance and uh, of, the, of the development climate. I mean, moment two comes with the first reform, with a, I would say with um, a, a bias towards uh, an inc in something that was the increase in exports could lead to development. Yeah. I mean, these economies were too close, import substitution, as Previch would have said, had gone too far, 
I mean, I was, I didn't, 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 didn't uh, say it, that you should be so, you should go so far in that direction. So we have to do, we have to also learn to export, and so export subsidies came into the debate. And again, it was room, room for development. Let's let's leave the developing countries uh, room enough, a benign neglect for the developing countries. Let's give them a handicap, and this is where the idea and of special and development uh, begin begins to gain ground. And it also, there is a sort of association here between Brazil and India. In the first reform, again, Brazil and India, well again, first time Brazil and India, in the, the mid-60s, they begin to argue in the gap that equality of treatment among unequals is unequal. So that was basically the very strong idea that they pushed and they managed to put forward the idea of special and indif differential treatment, which was, as I said, a handicap that developing countries needed in order to uh, gain access to export markets. Moment three is, again, echoing my, the presentations that preceded me, comes with the neoclassical backdrop. <coughs> all protection becomes protectionism. All protectionism, all protection, hence, is bad. And that is reflected, I mean, not, I mean it's, it's not just an imposition, I have to say, but I mean, it's reflected in the Uruguay round uh, package. It's in the, in the Uruguay round single undertaking and the idea that all size fits all. I mean, this, we all have to have intellectual property rules. We all have to have uh, bilateral investment treaties. We, are, we all have to, whatever. I mean, it's a take it or leave it single undertaking. Um, a, a, a medicine for all ills that comes in the single undertaking. And which the Uruguay round, actually, the Uruguay package round became Structural adjustment by another name, but that is something that uh, we learned along the way. Uh, but I mean, this is moment uh, three. Moment four comes. I mean, quite. As, I mean, as soon as the, as the single undertaking was single undertaking and the Uruguay round round was finished. I mean, this is the mid '90s. So no sooner had the Uruguay round been finished and closed and agreed. Uh, uh, there comes a new awareness of the asym of asymmetry, and this is the new word, the buzzword, asymmetry. I mean, asym asymmetry in process, asym asymmetry in substance, uh, and the, the awareness that there had been no bargain in the Uruguay round, that countries had adopted the Uruguay round package mostly to lock in trade reforms rather than to gain access to markets. So they had lost the opportunity to, uh, to gain access uh, to markets. There had been no bargaining that could that, that could be uh, sort of uh, to speak of in in the sense of market of market access. So in th that sort of um, again golden age of neoliberalism in the mid 90s again turned sour very soon, and we had the Battle of Seattle in 1999, which was not a developing country sort of uh, battle as it were. It was more a civil society battle, of which of course the developing countries. Bandwagon, but it was not really a developing country um, uh, sort of battle. It turned, it became a developing country battle, I think, in the following ministerial meeting in 2003 in Cancun, when the, 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 this, this ministerial meeting again collapsed in Cancun, and gradually, I mean, what we have, and this is coming into the present and up for debate again, I mean, what we have is an awareness that. Not, I mean, process was biased, there was a symmetry in process, but there was also a, a, a demand, a change, a, a demand on substance, the reclaim of policy space. So we have two big demands. One demands on process, and that sort of leads to the surge of a number of coalitions in the, develop, in, in the, in the WTO by now, the G20, the G33, the Friends of Fish, the, friend, the, long, the, the landlocked um, countries, the small and vulnerable, vulnerable economies, etc. There's enough, I mean, the friends of anti-dumping. I mean, it was an issue-oriented, issue-oriented coalitions gained, I mean, sort of gained the day and started to negotiate it, to negotiate on different issues. And many countries were members of different coalitions. I mean, there's a number of countries in Latin America that were members of uh, free trade for bananas, but protection for uh, <coughs> broccoli or whatever it was. <laughs> uh, I mean, so we had these countries that had not a dual. I, 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 I don't want to. I, this is. It's not. I, I mean, I'm, I put this as a, as, a, as a paradox, but it's not contradictory. I mean. You need free trade for bananas if you're Ecuador, but you need to protect rice and potatoes again if you're Ecuador. So you have to bargain issue by, by issue. 
um, uh, and it has uh, it's an issue oriented for sort of time, and I think this is sort of uh, remains uh, remains uh, in the present. It's still present. Um, so we have, I mean, well, to close at this point is we have attention to process and attention to substance, reclaiming uh, policy space. What I would like to add is that this attention that begins, um, this focus that begins to gain ground uh, is, is, is an indication of a power shift, but it's not yet in 2003 an, a, a global, a sort of regional power idea or a global power idea. It's, it, pro it, it sort of precedes or shows that there was a power <laughs> shift, shows that the develop some of the developing countries were gaining power, were beginning to think on process, were beginning to think on substance, but it did not yet, sort of, I would not yet, who would have said at that point that it was, um, that it was a hegemony in transition, as I would say today. I mean, it was a power shift, but a very gradual shift that gradually gained uh, ground as we moved on to the decade. So what happened over the decade? With the empowerment, both in terms of agenda and in terms of process, is stalemate. Well, uh, uh, the WTO faces a stalemate. And a surge in the regional trade agreements that we all know and, 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 and are very familiar with. So where do we stand now? And um, after hearing David and, and both John, I thought, well, like, what the idea that it has um, gained center stage in the WTO now is the idea of value chains. So, I mean, we know what value chains are, but I mean, to, are they structuralist in the way that uh, John and David presented, or are they more neoliberal in, 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 in certain ways? To me, I mean, value chains are very interesting in, as an idea. I'm not saying that I, 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 everyone has to go value chains, but as an idea, it is, I think, a mix of structuralism, because it has a foot on production, I mean, it, it, it's structuralism, but it's also free and freer trade. So there's a mix between structuralism and neoliberal in this new idea of value change, which is what seems to be gaining ground in the WTO. What I see in the value package, actually, is trade facilitation, which is probably the greatest component of the value package, and which is, of course, something that value chains and the big multinationals and is, is what they need. I mean, free trade, trade facilitation, I mean, the, the sort of um, reduction of all barriers on, at the border to allow value change to operate, um, to operate as freely as possible. So is it big versus small development? Is it infrastructure? I mean, big versus small development does, hasn't come into the WTO. Infrastructure comes under the government procurement code, but very, interestingly, in, very interestingly, very few developing countries have signed the government procurement code. So that, again, is a big, big uh, sort of policy space that they have retained and where import substitution, in a way, still lives on. Uh, and value chains, as I said, is, uh, as I see them, is probably a mix of the old structuralism production with the new neoliberalism, which is more free and freer trade. That is all.